Psalms chapter 5. Beginning at verse 1, verse 1 says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto my voice, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that had pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. Verse 5, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So our subject for today is, does God hate me? Does God hate me? Now, hate is a word that um, with strong feelings, right? And I was taught never to say that you hate someone. Never say you hate someone. Say you don't like them, right? But that does not change your feelings toward that person. Everybody understand that? doesn't change your, your feel, how you feel toward that person. Now, now, we've made hate be a negative word, right? And it's to be avoided at all costs. But that's us. But what does hate really mean? Now, according to Miriam Webster, to Webster, it said that, that hate is intense hostility and aversion, usually deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of, of injury. Extreme dislike or disgust, antipathy, loathing, that's what hate means. So we're going to go with that, 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 that second um, definition. Extreme dislike or disgust, antipathy, loathing. And antipathy, this means a, a deep-seated feeling of dislike and aversion. And loathing means a feeling of intense dislike or disgust, hatred. So it's all a circle. They all mean the same thing. Everybody with me on that, right? It all means the same thing. Now, so what it means, hate means uh, passionate, dislike, disgust, hostility, antipathy, and loathing. Now, I can imagine that um, I, I guess I can kind of see why, um, you know, I was taught not to not to use that word. Anybody else was taught never to say you hate someone? No, just me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it never let me be like, okay, so what do I call this? Right. It never let me explore what that was. I right. Was. Just, like I said, it don't, doesn't change how you feel. So it was, you know? I thought it was fear. Uh-huh. Um, I'll just say my mom had told me she wasn't around when all this was going on. You know, so you like, I hate my brother. Uh-huh. don't say that. And I'm like, but you're not here so I can really right. I can see what this is. Right. 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 So so, uh, uh, let's get back into uh, into. Well, well, my answer was fear. Yeah. I feared her because I'm going against her, but right. I did not want to be in that situation. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm with that. I see that. I see All that. Right. Uh, let's get back into um, into Psalms five. So what is happening is David here is uh, he's he he's praying to God for protection. And he's, he's asking to be protected from who? From the wicked. So David is saying, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto my, to the voice of my cry, my king and my God. For unto thee will I pray. And my voice shall hear, and uh, uh, my voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that had pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. 
Thou hatest all works of iniquity. So David is, is basically saying here, he's saying that according to everything that you are, you have to protect me and keep me from these people. That's what David is saying. He's reminding God of his word. And when we pray, we have to, that's how, that's how we, we have a, make our prayers effective is by holding God at what he says, reminding God of what he said to us. Y'all understand that? So, and David is saying, he goes on and saying, furthermore, you don't condone these people. And in fact, you hate them. That's what David is saying. And he's reminding God of this, right? So my first point for the day is, watch this. Let's, let's, let's get into this. Can God hate? Can God hate? It's my first point, my first question. Can God hate? So we see in verse 5, it says that the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. And just to go through and give you a few more scriptures with hate in them, Psalms 11 and 5 says that the Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Again, Romans 9 and 13, and we know this. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Hmm. See, now, now here's where, the, here's where the, the, the conflict and stuff is starting to happen. Because, okay, we, what's the first thing we want to say? God is love. Right? God loves everybody. Hmm. And I, I know the dictionary defined hate as being a dispassionate, dislike, disgust, hostility, antipathy, and loathing. But that's according to man. This is, somebody, this is what somebody is thinking. And, 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 and matter of fact, that's it. This is somebody mind thinking. That's it. That, that was man, right? Right? And that's why we teach that what? When it pertains to the Bible, we never use what? The dictionary to define what's in the Bible, right? right. Okay? And why is that? We never use the dictionary to define biblical words. Why is that? Why do we not use the dictionary to define biblical words? Say it louder. The dictionary has newer meanings. That's absolutely correct. Because the Bible, the Old Testament written in, in Hebrew, New Testament in Greek and Latin, the dictionary is in what? English and it's newer. English is a very new language. That's very good. So we can't, a lot of times we can't use what a word means today to try and justify what the word meant, define what the word meant in another language. That's great, AJ. All right. So now, um, so let's go back to somebody in mind that's thinking while it's creating that conflict. So, so basically what they're saying that, okay, in the scripture, it has to mean, hate has to mean something different. That's what's saying in their mind. So it's saying that verse 5, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So let's go and break this down. Let's use the blue letter Bible and break this down and see what it means. Hmm. Right? See that? The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So hate comes from the Hebrew word, which means sane, right? So let's go, when we click on, on thou hatest, let's go ahead and see what the definition is. Hmm. To be hateful, to hate a man of God. Hater, one hating enemy. Hmm, to be hated, hater of persons, nations, God, wisdom. You see that? So basically it's saying the same thing, right? But, but, but let's look down at the bottom. Sane, again, that's the Hebrew word. Primitive root to hate. Uh, personally, enemy, foe, hate. Odious. Utterly. So let's look up. What does odious mean? Maybe that, that'll change um, the definition a little bit. Odious is arousing or deserving hatred. Repugnance. Hateful. 
What does repugnance mean? Strong dislike, distaste, and antagonism. Are we seeing this? Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's nothing has changed. Now, but let's go back to uh let's go to um let's go to Romans 13, 9 and 13, where it says, Jacob, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Let's okay, now we're seeing that the word hate. Hate it right there is Masail, right? So that, that's a different word, right? So let's see what, let's click on Masail and see what it means. To hate, pursue with hatred, detest, to be hated, detested, right? So you know what, now, it's because this word detest right here, people will take detest. And make the test mean something different, right? Oh, let's see that Look what the definition of the test is. To feel intense and often violent antipathy toward, loathe. Remember, that's the same thing that was a part of our um, definition with, with Webster, right? Right? We're seeing that, right? Now, let me give you, let me give you one more um, because here's that Webster uh, definition again. See? Still has that 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 um, that antipathy, loathing, all of that is in there, right? Huh? And it violence, so it got worse. Hmm, right. It got a little bit more severe. So let's go to because here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. Here's what we understand. Because the word, let's go back to it right quick. The word masail was a different word than sane from earlier, right? Right. So what, what I'm going to do is, let's go to the Old Testament, because in the New Testament, it was in what? In Greek. That's why the word had changed from Sinai to Masail, right? So let's find that same scripture, uh, Jacob I love, Esau I've hated, in the Old Testament, which is going back to the Hebrew, right? Look at this. Malachi 1 and 3. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Look, and I hate it. What's the word for hated right now? Sane. So we back to the same place, right? Mm -hmm. So now, so now that we understand fully what, what hate means, and, and we understand that what? That God can hate. Y'all with me? Here's the next question. What causes God's hate to be kindled against me? What can cause God's hate to be kindled against? That's a good question, right? Right. right? Because, because first we went from, you know, God is love. God doesn't hate anybody. That's what we were taught. So now that we know God can hate, what can cause God's hate to be kindled against me? When we go to uh, verse 4 and 5, it says, Psalms, back to Psalms 5, verse 4 and 5 says, For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So right away in these two scriptures, we're seeing what? We're seeing wickedness. We're seeing evil. We're seeing foolish and iniquity. Okay, so let's let's go through and, and figure out these words. What does evil mean? Evil is bad. We don't have a problem with evil. Everybody pretty much know what evil means, but we're going to cover it anyway. It means bad, evil, disagreeable, malignant, unpleasant, displeasing, hmm, bad of value, worse than worse, evil, unkind, wicked, ethically. See that? In general, a person's of thoughts, their deeds, their actions. That's what evil is. Distress, misery, injury, calamity, adversity. That's what evil means. So now let's go to let's go to foolish. What does foolish mean? Foolish in this in this sense means like to make a show. Pride. That's what the foolish is. They're putting on a show. They're doing things that what? They're just vain. It has it's empty. Whatever they're doing, it has no meaning, nothing behind it. They're wasting their time. Just pretty much. That's what it is. Y'all got that? Y'all following me, right? 
That's what foolish means. Then iniquity. All right, here we go. Iniquity. And this is, this is kind of like with, with the foolish. Those whose efforts are in vain, no law, easy living, no consequences, idolatry. That's what iniquity is. Now, let's get deep for a second, right? Because I was taught that iniquity is just a fancy word for what? Sin. Okay, I wasn't the only one. So we understand that, I was taught that, that iniquity, sin, transgression, all of those words pretty much are the same. They just all just mean sin. But like I said, let's get deep for a minute. They all have different meanings. Sin is what? At its core, it means what? To miss the mark. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Right? That's what sin is. Disobedience. That's what sin is. Doing the opposite of what is right. And we understand that the sin nature is present in every man that was born after uh, Eve, right? Adam and Eve, right? Y'all with me on that, right? Now, the sin nature leads to trespassing. I'm just to give you something. A trespasser is, is one who crosses the line. That's trespassing. That's why we, we pray in the prayer, forgive us our trespasses, right? As we forgive those who trespass against us. Okay, but that's just extra for you. Then there's transgression. This is intentional sin. Transgression is intentional sin. Willful disobedience. I mean, uh, I'm transgression. Intentional sin. Like, 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 uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> transgression is intentional sin when you're disobedient, right? It's like running a red light. That's the easiest way to understand what a transgression is. And I remember... I don't know how good you guys' memory is, but I remember a few years ago, somebody made transgressions like very popular. Do y'all remember who that was? It was an athlete, Tiger Woods. When Tiger Woods was uh, caught cheating, he said he asked for forgiveness for his transgressions. I was like, man, that was, that was over. Hmm, 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 for that intentional, he knew what he was doing. Ah. Uh. And then, so sin is the Mr. Mark, transgression is intentional sin, and then iniquity is premeditated choice, continuing without repentance. That's what iniquity is. Hmm. Premeditated. So you know what? This is what I'm going to do. You see? But there's this, there's this, there's something else about, about iniquity. See, how we understand the difference between transgression and, and iniquity is what? A, a lifestyle is iniquity. That's more serious because what? Continuing without repentance. See, when you run that red light, you see what I'm saying? You can say, okay, God forgive me or whatever. If I'm, We're just using that for example. But when we do something, we can ask for forgiveness. But with iniquity... When it's a lifestyle, we don't ask for repentance. So this is where, this is why homosexuality is iniquity. Because you don't say, God, forgive me, and then go ahead and repeat the act over again. What's the question? Um, some people have, it's their lifestyle. I agree with all of that. That's mm -hmm. true. Some people have a lifestyle of, I am not going to stop for any red light. They have premeditated it. And it can become a lifestyle, you know, um, like like he was saying, homosexuality. But even us, you know, growing up or whatever in the Lord, you can just say, "Well, I'm not, I'm not going to read that that book of the Bible, that part. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to apply so, that part." So, so you know what happens? It's a good thing you brought that up. So what happens is that transgression leads to iniquity. That iniquity that continue without repentance leads to a reprobate mind. When we go to Romans 1 and 24, Romans 1 and 24 uh, tells us about that. He said that, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanliness through their lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie 
and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So what happened is, see, that's what it's talking about. Will a man rob God? When Malachi say, will a man rob God? That's what it's talking about. You're saying that God is, you're making God be a lie. You're saying that God is not who he is. And see, for all of those that continue in that lifestyle, I ain't going to change for nobody. Okay, you go to the, repro the reprobate mind. So now you can't recognize the truth. God say, okay. So God handed them over to their lust. You see? So watch this. Even when we go to 1 John 3, watch this. Because here's the thing. Whosoever abided in him, who is him? In God, in Christ, in Christ. Whosoever abided in him, sin it not. Whosoever sin it had not seen him, neither know him. That's when you continue in sin. Right? Because sin is that missing the mark is the lust of the flesh, right? Verse 8 says, he that committed sin is of who? The devil. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For he purposed, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. So what we are seeing is that um, the act of sin is what creates the hatred of God. Because I'm saying this, the devil is the what? He's the what? Of God. He's the enemy of God. Right? That's why God hates the, the devil. He's the enemy. He's a foe. Y'all understand that? And in comparison, those that commit sin is what? A foe. A foe of God. So when you're a foe of God, God what? Hates God hates you. See, because it's easy for us to say that, you know what? Thus, when we get down to saying, okay, God doesn't hate anybody. God loves it. Does God love Satan? Does God love the devil? No, the devil is the enemy. Well, that's easy. But now, when you find out that everybody that sin is of the devil, so if he hates the devil, what that make you? He hates you as well. You see that? See how simple that is? That's simple when you read it. And you understand what the, what, what the word of God said. You, you have something you want to say, uh, Teresa? Yes, sir. Go ahead. So, um, you know, people say a lot of times that the Bible contradicts itself. And one of the passages where the Bible tells us to love our enemies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, that has been a debate that I have come up with. You know, people say, you don't hate. Well, here's the, here's the thing. Okay. Hate with us does what? What happens when we start to hate? We act on it. We act on it. You understand that? So when we begin to hate, guess what? Now we start, it's like we start playing God. You see what I'm saying? See why we shouldn't hate? Because this feeling, I begin to, 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 to act on this feeling of disgust, of hatred. You see? Does that make sense to y'all? Mm -hmm. See, because you got to realize this, that, guess what? In the Old Testament, God established himself with his people, right? And the thing is that God's enemies, their enemies was God's enemies. Their, God's enemy was their enemies. You understand that? You, you follow that, right? But when we switch over to the, to the New Testament, now that salvation is opened up to the, because it was only Israel. Israel was of God. The Gentiles was the enemy in the Old Testament. Let me just say that. Y'all follow that, right? So now that salvation was opened up to the Gentiles, guess what? Now your enemy, somebody that's Teresa's enemy, may not be the enemy of God. Do you understand that? Does that make sense? Okay, let's go back. In the Old Testament, it was Israel. God's people were Israel versus the Gentiles. Right? They were all on one side. God and his people against the Gentiles. Now, what happened is because of the Israel's disobedience, salvation was opened up to the Gentiles. Right? And now all the Gentiles have to do is accept Christ, and they're no longer an enemy of God. But what about Satan being the enemy of Israel and the, he's the enemy 
throughout OPM in Well, what happened is, since it was God's chosen people, yeah, Satan was always the enemy. But God chose Israel and said that, you know what, I'm going to take them as my people. So he took, he took Israel and said, okay, I'm establishing I'm their God. So they're no longer enemies. They, they are my people. Now it's they, I pulled them over on my side. It's us against everybody else. So when you say that my enemy is not God's enemy, how is that so if I am through Christ? Because. And if they're against Christ, they're against. Okay, because guess what? You know how you can have a, you can have a disagreement with somebody in the church? Yeah, it could be. I mean, I understand it could all be on me and it was just my whatever and I handled it wrong. And because of the repercussions of I hurt her a long time ago, didn't talk about it, and she's my enemy now. Uh huh. I understand that, but. But that don't mean that they are enemy of, of God because. Right, I understand you, that. So you, but that's, that's what I'm saying though. That's the, that's the difference. I understand that part. Okay. Because we have a will that is not. That's right. Own. That's right. That's that, yeah. <laughs> right. So that, that's the difference. Yes. So that's how we can yeah. be. That's how we can be. Go ahead, Solanda. It's the same way from the Old Testament. God's enemy, those that the Gentiles are still God's enemy in the New Testament, the Gentiles, and they are still our enemy. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, in the body, we have disagreements, we have arguments. Mm -hmm. We pray for those. Even though you may dislike them, your brother cannot be your enemy. Your brother and your sister in Christ cannot. I mean, you can have. They can transgress against you. They can sin against you. But you have to keep an open mind because, just like the Bible say, if if they slap you, turn your cheek and let them slap you on the other side. He ain't talking your about your brother. He's yeah. not talking about the world. He's not talking about still Gentiles. Even though the door the salvation is open to Gentiles, if those Gentiles haven't accepted God yet, mm -hmm. they still their enemy. Okay, that's the that's the but that's the difference. What you say it though. They haven't accepted Christ yet, so they are enemy. Mm -hmm. In that sense, that they haven't accepted Christ yet, because once they accept Christ, they're no longer enemy. You 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 follow what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So they can start off as an enemy, but guess what? Because watch this. I'm just saying this. Our job is to go what? Spread the gospel. Jesus said, "I ain't came from the for the righteous, mm -hmm. but, sinners but sinners to repentance." So, therefore, the sinners, the Gentiles, would be sinners. And our job is to spread the gospel to them. Yeah. Um, you, you, with, you, you with me? Because I think the overall, what I was trying to get at is that it's not my morality. I didn't create this morality. Just like God established himself. He established himself with Israel. Mm -hmm. He established the way of the Gentiles to get to him. So right. I'm not coming in. I am judge and jury. This has already been established. That's right. And love requires hate. Right. Hate. And that's how you switch from being the enemy yeah. to uh, some, one of God. Go ahead. But you know, I think um, the church, church folk get so hurt today because we're too scared to categorize people and their fruit. Even you see the fruit. And that's like the other night mm -hmm. I told Shawine some Shawine say you evil and her husband evil. Because you're so scared to categorize the Lord say you wouldn't know them by your fruit. Mm -hmm. But you you so scared yeah. because the world has told us only God can judge you. Mm -hmm. We don't judge. And guess what? The Bible says, cast not your pearls among the swines. Unless they go rent you, they're gonna turn and they're gonna tell you the pieces. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we put ourselves out there for people that's not of God. We see their fruit, but we keep on trying to do God. And guess what? The Lord ain't in that. The Lord ain't blessing that. The Lord ain't covering you because you became a fool. And and I think a lot of times we're scared to categorize people, even though we see their fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I lost the beginning. You said, what did you say about in the Old Testament, the enemy? Give me that little line. In the Old Testament, it was Israel versus the Gentiles, Jews versus Gentiles, period. It wasn't, no, you could only, the only people that had God were the Jews. Mm -hmm. There was no way around that. Okay. In the Old Testament, some of those people that were considered to be Gentiles now have an opportunity at salvation. 
So, huh? Okay. You with me? So now there's a chance for you not to be an enemy of God. Now you have a chance because of their disobedience. Salvation was opened up to the Gentiles. Now I have a chance at salvation, whereas in the Old Testament, I didn't have a chance at, at salvation. Salvation was not mine. Mm -hmm. You with me? Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. But so I guess I still do disagree with what you said, that my enemies may not be God's enemies. When I guess you... It would be better to say uh, Barnes. I don't know, but <laughs> okay. Watch this. Okay, let's let's say this. Yeah. Let's say somebody that's that's. Let's say somebody that's. Let's use Saul for example, right? Saul was persecuting Christians, right? But God had a plan for Saul. So to the Christians, Saul slash Paul was what their enemy. You see what I'm saying? But God said, not so. I got a plan for him. You see that? So see why your, their enemy wasn't God's enemy. Well, wouldn't he be an enemy to God? I mean, if God called you and you're still sinning against him, he's killing people and he's doing things. He was that... an enemy. He was a Gentile, just like I say. But he chose to accept because on that road of Damascus, if he would have said, um, Jesus, I'm still killing everybody. He still would have been an enemy. But yeah, but you can't. But wait, wait. But I you can't. I'm saying before he changed, he was sinning against God's people. He was, but he didn't think so. He thought he was doing the right thing. But he was still God's enemy, regardless what he thought. Uh uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. He was, but but listen, understand this. He thought he was doing God a favor by killing them. You see the difference. And to the to the to the those that had accepted Christ, they said that no way are we dealing with him. He's our enemy. But he wasn't the enemy of God. Because God took what he was doing, that passion, he just didn't know who God was. He didn't have the right understanding of who God was. Because once he got the right understanding of who God was, God said, I can use that. I can use that passion that he has for God. It's just that I have to replace it with the knowledge of who, who God truly is. You see, so from from the outside, in the beginning, he was an enemy of the Christians, but he was not an enemy of God. Because that transition, you see what I'm saying? He the thing is, OK, technically he was an enemy of God, but in his mind, he thought I'm doing this for God in the name of God. It's just that his perception was wrong. His knowledge of God was wrong. And that's why God was able to use him. Gotcha. You see? So that's why your enemy is not always the enemy of God. Because suppose they would have, when, 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 um, who it was, um, that God sent to Ananias? Um, what's the name? Ananias. Ananias. God sent Ananias, say, okay, go get Paul. Paul is coming. Right? And Ananias say, do you know who Paul is? Paul been killing your people. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? I got something for him. Go get Paul. Say, he was afraid. He was saying that that's an enemy. He, he killing people that, that believe in, on, in, in Christ. So if they were to keep it as an enemy, he would have never been able to reach or uh, accept whatever, everything that Paul had. Mm -hmm. You see? So that's why your enemy is not on. Because guess what? Here's what Ananias saw. Ananias was seeing through the flesh. I seen what he done did. Fear done crept in. He might kill me. God was looking at the heart and know what his, his, his poss the possibilities were, what his ceiling was spiritually. You see? You understand? you with me? Okay. So now, let's go back. Let's get back into, um, this is why, because I was saying that, um, what we were saying is that the, the act of sin, it was creates that hatred from God, Right? And there's no way to separate the person's actions, the person from their actions. Y'all, y'all understand that? So this is why in, in, in verse five, when it says, um, uh, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers, those that do these things, not thou hatest the things Thou hatest 
the workers, the ones that do the things. He hates the things. Yes, he does. He hates all of that. But guess what? It, when you do it, actually perform it, he hates you too. Y'all get that? Workers. That's the people. That's the employees. Those that are being employed by these things. That's what make God hate you. You understand that? So guess what? If you the 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 um evil by itself and nobody did evil, you know, God was still a poor evil. But now, once you go over there and pick evil up and start doing evil and start bearing the fruits of evil, now God hates you too. And with that being said, not even going back, but that created that confusion with Ananias. God doesn't, he's not an author of confusion. That's why he would, you know. But watch this though. Here's the thing. Ananias wasn't seeing it through the spirit. He was seeing it through the flesh. God is not the author of confusion. But he wasn't in the spirit saying not Paul. He was in the flesh saying not Paul because Paul is killing Christians. Remember the Bible says, don't hate those that, um, don't, um, you, you don't fear those that can kill the, the body. You, you understand? He was fearing the one that could kill the body. That's how he saw it. Not spiritually. Go ahead. What you, go ahead, bitch. And what we need to understand is that's like a, a, a homosexual, a child that was um, molested and grew up in that lifestyle. And because they think I was... Um, I was victimized. This is, but mm -hmm. this is... I didn't choose this. This was given to me. When truth come and they heed the truth, they're no longer in the middle of Let them in. Just like Paul. Paul was killing Christians, but when the truth came forward, because he thought he was going the way right. of God. He exactly. said a lot of times when Good we're man. in sin, that's them 10 years of uh -huh. um, being ignorant. When we're in sin and mm -hmm. we know the truth, that we can look like enemies of God because they mm -hmm. do. The young homosexuals, but guess what? When truth come and you make the decision to disobey and so because that sin is a process. Sin, transgression, and um, iniquity. Mm -hmm. It's a process. You don't you're not born um, just a work of iniquity. Mm -hmm. No, you, you're born into sin. Right. But when knowledge comes and you reject knowledge, then you uh -huh. move Transition. over from sin into transgression. Uh -huh. And then you move from transgression into iniquity. That's it. It becomes a lifestyle. Uh -huh. It becomes habitual. And it's like those 10 years that you was That's born. right. That's right. And the thing is that this, you cannot... You don't ask to be forgiven before you do something. Right. You ask to be forgiven after you do it. Mm -hmm. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. So you can't ask God, look, God, I'm about to go and do this. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm running all these red lights now. Yeah. yeah. No, no that's not the way it works. Forgive me, Lord. You, you see what I'm saying? That's not the way it works. All right. So right there, when it say that, that, that verse 5, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Right there, we can go ahead and cancel God loves everybody. Do y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. You can cancel God loves everybody. How? And that's what I ask. How? How? Because you know, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. A good example, a good answer for that is because the Bible said Esau sought repentance with tears in his eyes. If the Lord didn't really hate him, he hated the sin. That's the moment that God was waiting on for Esau to repent with tears in his eyes, but God still rejected him. That's because right. Because it was not about um the sin; it was about Esau, you. You gave yourself over to the sin. You knew my laws. You knew my statutes, and you refused. So it was Esau he hated. Hmm. There ain't no mistake. Yeah. See, 
the th- and let, let me tell you, you, you know what the you know what the reason why just why just like I was taught that that um well that God loves everybody. Here's the thing, um, and I'm gonna kind of you know get in this like people don't have the knowledge of God, and when you don't have the proper knowledge, that's just like Paul. Paul didn't have the proper knowledge, but he had the zeal for God. But he had knowledge. So God said, okay, let me line that knowledge up with that zeal. And guess what? He's going to be a mighty man of God. Yes. Now, the difference between Paul and people today is what? They use that as a defense not to change what I'm doing. So I can stay where I am because God loves me. And see, here's the thing. Why is this, why is this teaching necessary? See, why is this teaching necessary? Let me, let me, let me, let me, why, why are you thinking about that? Because I really want to hear y'all answer because, um, you know what? Psalms 89 and seven, let me see. Um, Psalms 89 and seven, Psalms 89 and seven says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence. Of all them that are about him. Revere means to fear. Revere, to be afraid. And that's what it's saying about God. Right? Stand in awe of him. Because what has happened is, if God is, this is why this teaching is important. Because you need to have the right mindset of who God is. In order to reverence him, he said, fear me. You see what I'm saying? But guess what? I mean, know that today we don't really fear God. Mm-hmm. You see, we don't fear God. We don't reverence God. You see, that's what has happened as a result of God is love. Mm-hmm. You see, it, it reduces how we see God. Because guess what? It's like you, you think about your parent in that time when you was afraid of your parent. Guess what? When they say something, oh, I'm going to do it because I don't want what's coming afterwards. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that's the same way God is. Still, when he says do something, you better do what he says. That same reverence that you have for your parents, you should have for him. The parents but, can be wrong, but God can't be wrong. God can't be wrong. So you got to make that from the flesh to the... Um, uh-huh. But guess what? But we still, we, still in, in, we still reverence our parents. Mm-hmm. You see, but once again, it goes back to fearing the the one that can can kill the the flesh. No, it's so much. Yeah, it's so much greater than that. It's so much greater than that. All right. So watch this. Now, my final point is what can I do if I am guilty of God's hate? Because now that we're exposing something and some people are going to fall under this hate. Right? But now, what can you do? Can it be changed? Okay? So here's the, so here's the thing. When you take that, that, that honest uh, evaluation, that, that, that self-assessment, and uh, you can on, honestly answer this question that, you know what, um, th- does God hate me? And if the answer is yes, because of your lifestyle, your actions, right? Because of your actions, because of your lifestyle, if that, that, that answer to that question is yes, the only option you have is to what? Repent. The only option you have is to repent. Uh, Acts 3 and 19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, what does repent mean? Repent, repent means to what? To change your mind. And see, that's what's happening. You change your mind because in your mind, you thought God was all loving. You could do whatever you want to do. Paul, in his mind, he thought that he was doing the work of God, yeah. but he had to repent. Yeah. He had to change his mind and see that, oh. Go ahead. What, what you about to say, Solana? Talking to Israel, and guess what? Israel knew 
Mm-hmm. That's why we need to be mm-hmm. Gentiles that's coming into the body and they mm-hmm. divorce. That's what the law could overlook that because they didn't know. Mm-hmm. And you see repentance. A lot of people, you've been in the church 50 years, mm-hmm. you've been preaching, now you want to get into the homosexual lifestyle and you think before you die you're going to repent. You knew. Mm-hmm. You knew, and that's one thing, you know, we just say repentance. Just repent, just repent. Mm-hmm. But guess what? You have to know what state you're in when you fail. Yeah. Because if you fail in a state where you knew and you was just flat out disobedient, that's why you start turning you over to a mind. Mm-hmm. Because you knew. Mm-hmm. But see, and guess what? That's part of the fool. That's part of being foolish. Mm-hmm. When you start justifying, mm-hmm. you know, when you start looking at, because guess what? It takes you need revelation knowledge in order to read mm-hmm. the word. But see, when you start understanding that, okay, yeah, we're no longer the, under the law, we're under the grace. But then when you start saying that, yeah, so the man lying with a man was under the law, it ain't no more. No, that hasn't changed. You know why? Because now you need that understanding to know that okay. This is a sin against the flesh. Yeah. Now you're robbed. Anything that robs God is disobedience, is sin. When you say that God, because God, because I'm saying this, man and woman was established on day six when he created the, everything. On day six, he established man and woman. You see what I'm saying? So guess what? That's before the law came. You understand that? So therefore, you can't say that, okay, yeah, but that was the Old Testament. Well, let's go back to before the before the law came and see what it said. And then if you really want to know the truth, when you go into the New Testament, he said it again. You cannot do it. You cannot sleep. A man can't sleep with a man. He said even the women were sleeping with, 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 with women. That's what we get the, the crime against nature from. You see, go ahead. So I just said exactly one little piece. What I was going to say about, I did not understand when I had, when I was going through a divorce, and the pastor, preacher, whatever, just say that, told me you have to repent. I did not understand what she was talking about. I mm-hmm. asked her. This, this is kind of like just being with your mother growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I don't understand, but I was not gonna repent just because she said it, and I didn't have understanding. Hmm. She said, God hates divorce. Mm-hmm. I said, yes, I do too. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand what she was talking about because she wasn't coming with that truth of this Paul thing. This that this this is a God thing. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's like, oh my God, I could jump up out of here. But it's like, <laughs> I don't got man because I thought that was what the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. But- I did not divorce because... You know, oh, I took it lightly. Mm-hmm. And there was no room made for understanding or conversation or anything. It was not to deliver me. She was like, you made a vow to God and you need to repent. Mm-hmm. Well, duh, I didn't already, you know, that. But she was just like, you need to repent. Mm-hmm. Like, shame on you. You done done, you know, mm-hmm. look how that makes you look. Right. Well, now, if I had that conversation with her, I know what I... The understanding behind right. it, you know, no, I'm not going to repent again for that because I've already repented for that. Remember the first marriage, the, second, the first one. Mm-hmm. So God wants me to know Him so that I don't fear helping the man, but I do it unto God. He's not going to leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Let me let me say something. Let me let me say this. Um, and, and you know we it's gonna you know I, I don't want to jump into I don't want to jump too deep into that. But even when it gets down to God hates divorce, it's something to be considered there because guess what? You know what he said? He said he hates divorce amongst his people. His people. Now watch this. Whenever his people hooked up with people that wasn't his people, he authorized a divorce. Yeah. Wait a minute. See, but people will say confusion, Bible conflicts. No, it's not. But you know what? We'll 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 teach on that because I mean that's something that we have to understand. Because there's a lot of things that we do out of ignorance, and then when we come into knowledge, those things are still in place. You see what I'm saying? And guess what? We need to ask for repentance. We need to repent for even those things that we done when we were in our ignorant state, even though it's still a part of our life. 
You see? Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so so we, 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 what are we talking about? Um, we, we're talking about repenting. Why is repenting necessary? Why should your mind? We say that repent means to what? To change your mind. Now, why should your mind be be changed? Why should your mind be changed? Because it's necessary to renew your mind in order to what? To go forward to live this life. Because before God, you got to understand, sin represents the flesh. The flesh sin. That's one way of thinking. That's one way of living. And God is spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different way. So you have to change your mind in order to understand, in order to enter into the spiritual realm. Yes. Because that's why the Bible says that those that are, are, that are not of the spirit can't understand the works of the spirit. Mm -hmm. that's true. Okay. You see, it's foolish to them. Yes. Now watch this. And let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me show you, let me show you something about God. Hmm. Show you something about God. Um... You know what? Let me let me go to Acts 5. Acts 5. Acts 5. Let me let me tell you right quick. Um uh Acts 5 is about uh Ananias and, and Sapphira, his wife, right? So let me tell you what they did. They sold a piece of land, something that was rightfully theirs, and decided to give the money to the church. But here's what happened. In the process of selling it, getting the money, they decided that, you know what, we're going to keep a portion of it instead of giving it all to the church. Mm -hmm. right? right? So watch this. That's, that's the scenario what happened. Okay, so watch this. Um, it says, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. Verse 2, and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So they bought what they sold it for after they had took their cut and laid that at the apostles' feet, right? But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. So why are you? Because this is of Satan. Satan done got into you. Wait, we talking about greed now. You see what I'm saying? We ain't got to give him all of this. But 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 here's the thing. Here's the crazy thing. Okay, verse four says, "While it whilst it remained, was it not thine own? It was yours. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to do this. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power?" Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but of God. I said, first of all, what the apostle was telling them said, okay, wait a minute. It was yours. You didn't even have to sell it. Mm. Number two, after you sold it, it was still yours. You didn't have to give them the money. So why then you came and brought it and said that this is what we sold it for? Because in that moment, that's when it became wrong. Because now you're not lying to the man, to the apostle. You're lying to the Holy Ghost. So watch this. And Ananias, hearing those words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. So what does verse 5 say? What does that mean? Verse 5. It says, and Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. What does that mean, Elantra? What does verse 5 mean? Verse 5. What does verse 5 mean? He died. He died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means what? He died. he died. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. This man and his wife sold their possession that they didn't have to do. Right? Mm -hmm. After they sold it, they didn't have to give the money because it was still from their possession. Mm -hmm. Right? So, watch this. Were they being disobedient? Mm -hmm. This wasn't because of disobedience. It's because they lied. It's because they lied to the Holy Ghost. You see that? Mm -hmm. And he was struck dead because he lied to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And watch this. Verse 7 says, and it was about a space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yep, for so much. I sold, that's, yeah, that's what we sold it for. And Peter said unto her, how is it that 
ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord. Behold the feet of them which have buried thy husband at the, or, or at the door and shall carry thee out. And verse 10, then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? And watch this, verse 11. And great fear came upon all the church. What is that great fear? That's reverence again. Huh? Now they got reverence to God for what happened. We we know God was going to be killing people. So watch this. They were people of God. Are you understanding? They were people of God. So that means that they could have kept, they, have, they could have been kept in all the commandments of God. Then they get to the point where they lie to the, to the spirit of God. You know why? Because that spirit is what's in you. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. See that that spirit comes from God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and do you understand that the spirit of God is more important than Jesus? Do y'all understand that? Teresa, you with me with that? The spirit is more important than, than Jesus. Uh oh, that's that's something that's something that's great right there. All right, so see, here's the thing: the people do not today. People do, do not see the spirit of God in this way, and and okay. the reason is because what a, a false god has been created in their mind, on, in their knowledge. Yeah. You know, they've created this soft god mm -hmm. that that's all loving. That's he's just waiting around. He's lonely. He's sad, pathetic, waiting around for whenever you get time to give him any, and any piece of time you give him, he's satisfied with it. Huh? But see, the thing is, what about God is a jealous God. Thou shalt have no other God. Don't put nothing before me. He said, first seek ye my business and then everything else. Right? What about God is a man of war? Huh? You see what I'm saying? The Lord is his name. Yeah. What about this, 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 this spirit that struck them down for just lying? Don't teach that. You see what I'm saying? They don't teach that. So watch this. This is why it's important to repent. Because watch this. The, 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 the Bible said that what? The only sin that God cannot forgive is for final rejection of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Hmm. And guess what? You know what that's a result of? That's the result of the reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That, that sin, trespassing, iniquity leads to the reprobate mind, and now I'm rejecting who Christ is. I, I'm my own person in that moment. God said, okay, mm -hmm. have, it, have it your way. Now it's not a, the, the spirit of God is not available. And guess what? See, I was thinking about this. About 12 and 32, Matthew 12 and 32. Whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. Who is the Son of Man? Mm -hmm. We're talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. And who, whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. Neither in this world or the world to come. That's why I say the Spirit of God is more important than Jesus. You know why? Because that spirit comes directly from, this is your thought. This is everything that you are, that spirit of God. You see? And see, I was, because I always say, well, you know, I was like, it's okay, well, you can't, you can be, the only thing you can't be forgiven for is suicide and, and, um, and, and, and blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Because I was like, well, after you kill yourself, you can't, you can't repent for that. But here's the thing. Here's why. Yeah, that's right, but it's wrong. You know why it's wrong? Because guess what? Suicide killing is against the spirit of God. So all of that is connected to rejecting the Holy Spirit. All of that's connected to that iniquity, that, 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 um, that willful disobedience. You see what I'm saying? Because you understand that life is in the blood. And anytime you shed the blood, then guess what? You're killing, that's what makes it wrong. You become an enemy of God because you're playing. That's right, because you're playing God. Yeah, you made yourself God. You're deciding to take life and give life, and it's not your. That's not your decision to make. Amen. You see that? So the thing is, you have to. It is important. Is it is imperative that we repent because we're saying, "Does God hate me? 
And the thing is, if you are involved in sin, if you are living a lifestyle of sin, and it has led to iniquity, it's habitual, God hates you. And it is at this moment that you have to repent for what you've done. Because it says that the foolish shall not stand in his sight. I have a question. Go ahead. When um, one is delivered over to a reprobate mind, should they get a chance to come back and repent? How can you? How can you? How can you? Because at that moment, you because think about it. It's the habitual. It's the habitual that, that, that makes it um, with iniquity. This is my lifestyle. And, and my lifestyle is contrary to God. So what God said, okay, you want to continue in that lifestyle because you're continuing without repentance. Because I'm saying this. Think about this. When we do something wrong, the Spirit tells us uh, even before we do it. Mm -hmm. Or sometime after, that was wrong. I got to go back and repent. But guess what? The more I continue to do wrong, I can't hear the Spirit of God anymore. Because you know why? Because sin separates us from, from God, right? So now I've been separated to the point where I don't even hear it anymore. And now there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. I'm caught up in my feelings, in my emotions. You see that? And when I get caught up in my emotions, nothing else matters because you know what? It feels so good. This can't be wrong. You see? Now, what God said, I hand them over to a reprobate mind for the lust of the flesh. Because your lust of that flesh, of that feeling, the emotion, is so great now that what? You can't hear the word of God. Neither are you trying to hear the, the word of God. So is that done at the end of time or is that done now? Well, guess what? You're going to die. You're going to die before then. Well, I'm saying as people are going out fulfilling the Great Commission, we're to discern who has the reprobate mind who's been given over to themselves. Yeah, but here's the thing. The people that have the reprobate mind, they ain't going to even want to hear you. All right. And there's no nothing that bonding or binding you to well, guess what? The, the, first of all, I think we, I'm, I'm coming to you, Solanda. Here's one thing. Whenever we, even when we go out and minister, guess what? We should use discernment. We should be able to see the need and, and God will put on, okay, talk to that person. Yeah. Even if our mission in that person's life is only to introduce God to them and they don't accept it. Mm -hmm. That's okay because we did. That's why some water, some plant, but God gives the increase. You see, but a reprobate mind, guess what? They know. You see what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't even trying to hear it. You, you, you see what I'm saying? What you was about to say, Solana? Not always. You could be turned over to a reprobate mind and think because a reprobate mind, you, you think you're the right standards. You don't need salvation. You don't need repentance because, and guess what? But that's not the spirit of God. Mind, but a reprobate mind is going to be the church. People in the church. It's not going to be people that's serving whatever. It's, it's the church. But people that's preaching. Mm -hmm. People that's serving. They guess what? They done fell away from the truth. And that's those who you can tell what that's the, the truth trespass. is and what they tell you. Mm -hmm. I know that's what the truth. I, I know that's what the word said. But I can't teach that. You see, they on their way to a reprobate mind. Because guess what? The law won't stop convicting their spirits and it's going to be okay. They're going to be comfortable with teaching. Will a man rob God? Yeah, if you rob them in your tithes and offerings, they're going to be all right with it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of they, that's what the Holy Spirit can stop convicting and they right. satisfied. And that's those who the church is going to have a little bit of mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Because the and, and, and the and the thing is that pretty much those that have the it's only those that have the spirit of God. That's the, the truth, that have the truth. If that makes sense. So in order to I'm gonna just leave it there. You gotta have the spirit of God in order to have the truth. Guess what? Those that are outside the body, they don't have the spirit of God. You see? They are of Satan. Satan guides everything that they are. That's like we can't say a person who's been in a homosexual lifestyle all their life, or the Lord turned them over to the rubber mind. Mm -mm. He never had the mind of Christ. So right. You no, know, he was never turned over. Right. And then that's something that we don't know. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that we can't, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Unless the Spirit gives us to us, okay, this person is blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's something Very totally clear. different. 
But we can't look at a person and say, oh, yeah, yeah, him, not her. Because, see, this is where the church becomes hypocritical. When somebody comes in and don't sit the part, they ain't dressed up like us. It's like they lost some minds. You take a look at the news. Crime is at an all-time high.